My father was Israel Isaacson, and my mother was Dina Isaacson. Where were they both born? In Russia. And my mother was born. It's called Belarus now. And your father was born where? I think my father was born in Lithuania, which was part of Russia at that time. When did they both leave Russia? Well, my mother came here in 1911. She came right from Russia, right to Boston, because she has a brother. She had a brother here. My father came in 1913, but he went to Malmo, Sweden. He stayed in Malmo for, I think, a year or two, and then he came to New York. He stayed in New York for a year, and then I guess my uncle Rickman was already on the island. Someone told him they needed a tailor. So he had my father come down, and of course he started his business. And did they tell you about coming over and what it was like? They never talked. My mother, she would tell me a few things, but what was that to tell? They were always afraid of the Cossacks coming, but they never talked too much about the old country, just that it was a struggle. You know, they were just so glad to get away, because she can remember the pogroms when they would come and what they would do to everybody. It was horrible. And they just wanted to forget all that. This is my father's passport. I am not an anarchist. I am not a polygamist, polygamist or a believer in the practice right. of polygamy. And it is mm -hmm. my intention in good faith to become a citizen. Mm -hmm. He's for swearing his allegiance to Nicholas II Tsar of Russia. Russia. Hmm. Interesting, hmm? Yeah. Arrived in the port of New York City, state of New York, about the fifth day of August. 1913. And he came to the island in 1914. And then when I was born, of course, this is my birth certificate, you know, my, they named me Alice. Well, you know, my father with his accent couldn't say Alice because Ellis. So, they, so legally, I'm Ellis Isaacson. And are you the oldest in mm. your family? Then, I, then my brother Sam, then my brother Yale, who's deceased, and then my sister, Doris. <laughs> There's my sister. I always had to take care of Doris. So when they came over, how did they learn English? I asked my father one day, I said, how did you learn how to read and write? He said the boys in town taught him, the Lindsay boys and the Dayhill boys. They come in after school to teach him how to read and write. When I started school, I was told I didn't know how to speak English. How do you like that? My mother told me, she said, y you couldn't speak English. You know, we always spoke Yiddish at home. And so how had your father gotten to the vineyard? He was living in New York. My uncle Brickman, he was already on the vineyard. Mrs. Brickman and my father were brother and sister. And he said, come, he said, they need a tailor. So he came down and took this little store and worked there for years. He set up on the corner of a Union, Union and, and Yeah, right. But he was always in that shop until he, until he died. Plus having a huge garden, he was a wonderful, wonderful gardener. We had everything raspberries, strawberries, every vegetable that there was, and we had two grape arbors. Did you have to do any work in the garden? No, not in the garden, but Alice had to go down to mind the shop so Papa could come home for his lunch and for his dinner. From what age would you go and watch the shop? I mean, were you doing oh, since of... I was 10 years old. I had to, and I would be scared to death, you know. My father had a steam press. He said, the gauge goes up a little bit higher. He says, step on it and release some of the... Well, one time I got so scared, I ran across the street. Charlie Call had a store across the way. And I called my father. I said, something's going to blow up in a minute. You better, better come back. What did the shop look like? The inside? Yeah. When you walked in, it was... My father had some cases, you know, glass on one side. And then he had racks overhead for the stuff that had been cleaned. And then... Of course, he had his press, his machines, his sewing machines, and then he had a hand press, and he had a steam press, a big steam press, and a stove. That was it. Mm -hmm. And so what was he most busy with, with the tailoring? With everything. But I don't know how he did everything himself. Did any help? No. I used to go down and stay, like on Saturdays, stay in the shop. Then I would come back sometimes in the evening. But no, he did everything himself. I don't know how he did it. And he became a sailmaker. When the New York Yacht Club would come in, one year, the Wienamo split its jib. That was J.P. Morgan's sloop. It split its jib all the way down. They had no one, you know, that could fix it. And there wasn't any sailmaker on the island. But they remembered my father's got a sewing machine. So they packed that thing up on a truck. 
and brought the sale in. And my father really worked like a dog, getting them fixed up. And Wiedemo won the won the race. But then it happened again with another ship. I think it was R.P. Brown, I think, from Providence. And, of course, all their people were mostly Swedish. You know, They didn't know my father could speak Swedish. They were going to pull a fast one on my father. They were going to make, it, make out a bill, and they were going to pad it, see, so that they'll all, all get a little something. So they did that. They were ready to go. And then my father, he said something in Swedish, and they looked at him. So they didn't do what they were going to. They were going to really fool him. So did your father do a lot of sail repairing? Yes, he did. He did most of the work for the Vineyard Haven Yacht Club. Did I tell you this story? Oh, two boys. They were kids. They must have come into Oak Bluffs because uh, Joe Silvey, who was the representative at the time, was running the hotel, the Ocean View. Joe found them. They're sopping wet. They were, they came off a boat. He didn't, nobody knew who they were. They had no money. They had no other clothes. Their sail was all shot. The sail split. Here they're going to the races to Nantucket the next day. So Joe Silvey gave them food and gave them a bed to sleep in overnight and gave them a change of clothes and then took them over to my father's and he fixed the sail and they won the race. And who? And, oh, it was Jack, Jack Henley and Jack and uh, Robert.